If you roll your own authentication system, like we did in the previous video, it's really important for you to be able to verify if the user owns the email they're using to subscribe. That's what we're gonna do today. Sending emails can be a little bit tricky and it depends on which service you use and so on. So for this video, we're going to use resend and I'm gonna show you how to generate a token, send to the user and validate that token. So that can be used as an email verification workflow. It can be used as a magic link. It can be used with a lot of different things. And we're going to use Terso to store the token. We're going to use resend to connect with the user and send an email. And we are going to use Solid Start to create our app and verify that token. So see you in the code. So as usual, we're going to go coding this interface that we have on the screen. And this is the app. It's the same app as we did the OTP. And I already been working on it. So it has a little bit more than that. It has the solid UI. It has mystic UI with that fancy sparkling letters and a lot of things. But what we need to do for the email to work is two tables. And we're going to set up the schema for them now. The first one is the email verification table, which is where we're going to store the tokens. So we have an ID that's also set. We have the email, which is the person trying to subscribe to us, their preferred name, the token that we're going to generate now, and the time it, the token was created in case we need to expire it. So this is going to store the token until they verify. Once they verify, we remove them from the email verification and we add them to the waitlist. The waitlist has pretty much the same information, except that we don't need the token anymore because we already validated the email. So now they're officially in our waitlist. With these, we can create a few helpers to deal with our data. And then the first one is going to be whenever the user tries to join our waitlist, we check if that email is already there. And then if it is already there, then we can act accordingly. Then whenever we're going to check the email against the verification token, we need to fetch that email from the database and make sure we have it in our table. If we have it in our table, we return the email. So that's the get email from the token because that's what we, the token is the old, all the data we're going to have when they're coming because it's going to be in the URL. So we need to grab that token from the URL and check the email if it's already there. Once the user is verified, then we need to delete them from the email verification and add them to the waitlist. Now it's time to generate the tokens. So we saw in the past the generate OTP token and now we're going to generate a nonce. So that's the token we're going to create. It's a token that's only going to be used once and every time we run it, it brings a different hex. So it's completely random. And then the ref ID is important because when we're sending transaction emails, we don't want them to be threaded in the inbox. And when passing a specific HTTP header with a unique ID says, to the inbox that that email is unique, so it should not be threaded you know, as a response or as a forward of something else. So we jump into our mailing module and that one's going to have one method, the sent email, and we're going to first generate a token with the method we just saw. Once the token is generated, we're going to insert it into the database. So inserting into our email verification table with the values that we just put in our schema, so the email, the token, and the time it was created. But in this case, if that entry already exists, if there's already an email with a token there, we are going to update it to a new created date and to a new token. That happens whenever we determine that a token is expired, we allow the user to create a new one. And then we can jump into sending the email. So we're going to use resend for this one and I'm passing the email that I already have uh, authenticated the domain with resend. And then I pass the subject and I created a few tags. 
this list and subscribe is important for marketing emails. It's not entirely necessary for transaction. This happens to add a header with an endpoint that users can have that one click and subscribe. And finally, we have the X entity ref ID that this is the HTTP header that's going to ensure that my transaction email is in its own thread. If I want something to be threaded, I just I need to store this ref ID and pass the same ID to the subsequent emails. And the way that we're going to create the text in the email is with this method over here, waitlist email. And I'm using that to create an email with solid. What I'm doing is I'm using the render to string method that's coming straight from SolidJS core and I'm running to string this HTML. So I add the HTML heads and everything that's needed and then I call a component. So this is not a component that I can put on my website because it has a few very specific things. So one of them is the URLs need to be absolute. So I have this environment variable that I'm passing down. It has a few styles that are just for email, a lot of inline styles, no tailwind here. And I'm, append I'm prepending the absolute URL to everything that I'm doing. You cannot do SVG, you need to do images and so on. With this, I can, we can then jump into our route and create this fancy form over here. So we're going to create this waitlist component. As you can see, there's a lot of things coming from outside. We have solid UI with a text field. Uh, we are using our sending mail data and we're using the use submission to handle the form submission and the pending state. If you're not familiar with this one, I have a video for you. Then we have our send email. We check if the contact exists, the CTA and the Sparkle test for, uh, from Mystic UI. Finally, we do the confetti explosion. So because it's a client only method, I need to use a dynamic import for it. And because it's a named export, I need to reassign the module from the named export to the default export because that's how client works, client only works. And then I have my server action, which I'm going to pass the use server directive. It's going to receive the form data, which I'm going to grab the registering email and the preferred name from my fields. If the contact exists, I'm going to re I'm going to throw an error. And if not, we're going to call that send email and return with a true. Then I have my actual component, which I'm using the registration to handle the submission. And then I have all the like usual form stuff. And then I'm passing the action over here to my form component. Other than that, it's pretty much handled by solid UI and I'm just having some components here to show if there's a registration error and so on. So let's see how this one works. So I'm going to have my super subscriber and I'm going to pass this email that I have and let's send it. Seems to have worked. Let's go check my email. So here we go. We got an email and then we can click it. And there you go, it's verified. Yes, science! So let's see how it works in the verification route. So the verification route is going to have a query where I'm going to then grab the email from the token that's in, going to be in the URL. And if there is an email with that token, we're going to then say it's verified and we add it to the waitlist. Once the add to the waitlist hasn't thrown, we can then delete the email verification. And that's, that's it. So then from our status, we have a create async that's going to grab what's coming from the use params. So I have a hook that's going to look at the URL and grab the parameters from this. So it's a named parameter called token. And from that, while this request is in flight, the initial value is going to be loading. Once it's done, it's going to be either okay or error. And then you can add accordingly. So you can prompt them if it's if it's an error, if it's invalid and so on to generate a new one. Otherwise, you can say it's okay. So now you know the most ergonomic and quickest way to send emails from an app, in my opinion. And I hope that has helped you. 
Let me know in the comments below how you feel about implementing your own flow right now and how you if you connected that with the other video that we did. If you have any further questions or suggestions for more content, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, to the next one.